<laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Do we want to talk about um, peppermint? I haven't tried peppermint since I think it's first release, so I'm not familiar with what's changed for the recent one. I, I haven't tried it, uh, but it, it I, the idea is interesting because it's. Yeah. It, it, I mean, it. I, I can. The last time I used it, it was basically Ubuntu plus um, Mozilla's Prism, I think, is what it was called, where you could take any web-based application or website and turn it into a launcher on your desktop and make it look like it's a local application. Yeah, as the as the friends from kind across the crawl. pond pointed out to me when we did when when I joined them on Tech Bytes, they're no longer using Prism. They're now based on Chromium uh, because of. You know what Mozilla did and stuff. I I like the idea, even though it's not for me. But I, at the end of the day, this is one of those projects I want to see succeed. If only if something like Chrome takes off, I want there to be an established open alternative where you don't have to go through Google to get this type of stuff. But on the other hand, because it's a Chrome-like OS, I'm not sure it can. Because it's like they're literally trying to to fill the same niche that Google is going after with all these Chromebooks and and so on and so forth. And, and HP's to a point is going to be going after the hybridization with WebOS. I'm like, it, I, I I want it to, but I'm like, can it? I, I, I uh, it's like it, the I mean the idea is it basically tries to make all this web-based stuff run. As if it were a native app, and that's great. Uh, and the, you know, hybridization. But it's not. Yeah, but, but no, and it's like at, at the end of the day, um, the the user. Well, how many of the newer browsers are doing just that, adding the app tabs and yeah, yeah. making things look and feel like they're local and they're really not. No, and, well, and that's the thing. I'm like, it, it's 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 going for a Chrome-like experience while still having a local system. And I'm like, but if you really want that you're not going to be buying a Windows computer that you're going to be repurposing into Linux or a Mac to repurpose into Linux. You're going to be buying a Chromebook, which then you've already, it's like, they want it to, but pragmatists looking at the logistics of getting that established. Uh, it, it's uh, it really the... I, I took a look at it, and they're going to be a really hard sell, because last I looked, I think they were 500 bucks. No, no, that's the problem with the Chromebooks. The price is horrible. They cost more than a netbook, and they do less. I'm like, uh, how no. do you sell I that? <laughs> I think they come free uh, 3G, but I don't know for how long. I'm not on, I think it's the 100 megs like mine had. So I mean, which means the screen. moment you hit it, you you you, you can you can burn oh, through a hundred. You can't reach you ever again. Yeah, you you can burn through a hundred megs using email. You know, that's then alone but actually the using the internet. Actually died out twice. Like died, would not reconnect, would not do anything. Had to call. I, I got in touch with the Google Ninjas after a few months and uh, managed to get it running again. And then the first time I used it, ran out the the data. Oops, gone again. Doesn't work anymore. So. I just don't even care. No, well, no, that, that, that's the thing. If, if they want the Chromebooks to sell, honestly, they need to be overly subsidized. It needs to be, oh, here's a laptop for 100 bucks. It needs to be the cheapy $50 to $100 laptop that's, by the way, you're going to be leasing it for the rest of your life in this data contract plan you signed, but the reality is you can sell that. If it's anything less than that, for what it is and what it does... Well, how many netbooks do they have out there that are being subsidized by Verizon or AT&T or whoever else that are 100 bucks for a netbook that is a dual core with 2 gigs of RAM and whatever else? That, that's actually... Oh, I think not, yeah, yeah, no, that's an actual computer, not something yeah. that's dependent on the cloud. But if you want to on it. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah that, that's one of those things I'm like... I, 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 I'm, I'm just not seeing the sale here. Uh, uh, the moment I, I was like, it's a novel idea, some use it, but the moment I saw the price, like you're saying, the, the Samsung one for 500 bucks, I'm like, fail. <laughs> it's like, fail. At the end of the day, people are going to take one look at that price tag and go, does half as much for four times the price, does everything for one-fourth the price. Huh? Yeah, I want that one. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's, it's that simple. It's like, uh, it's it, 
You know, and that brings up an issue, because at the end of the day, they're basically a Linux, you know, a cheapy Linux laptop is what a Chromebook is, what it boils down to. It, it's a, it, it's yeah. web-based, but it's a cheapy Linux laptop. Uh, as much as I hate to say it, it's a broken Linux laptop. Yeah, yeah, no. The, 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 because a, when you don't have the functionality to do anything locally, yeah, it's broken. Yeah, it's a broken Linux laptop. But th this is the thing right. I can... I can never understand. Like when you when somebody starts to market a Linux machine, even if it's a bad Linux machine like the Chromebooks, uh, somehow it costs more, which I can never figure out because Linux costs less. But somehow I think the a lot of it has to do with Microsoft subsidizing the Windows-based machines, the Microsoft techs, as it were. Uh, okay, and, well, and even if they're paying that illegal Linux tax where like somebody has trolled and said give us money even though they're not entitled to it, at the end of the day it should still be cheaper. Like, it, it's, like you say, it's got to be the subsidizing, it's got to be the giving it away. It may not even be Microsoft, it might be the, if you put our software on there for other companies too, we'll give you money. And yeah. that sort of thing should be doable if you have Linux installed on it. Yeah, no, it, well, I mean, and it obviously is. I mean, look at all the stuff they're sticking on Android, you know? That's, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> It's just, it's, it's, it, somehow they made Android stick, and I'm glad they did. And, and I think HP is going to make WebOS stick, which I'm, I, I'm kind of looking forward to, because what I would desperately love to see is WebOS come in and kick Android and iOS up, uh, up the backside and say, Hey, assholes, the game ain't over yet. Let's play. <laughs> it's like, I want to see that. I want to see the hornet's nest get stirred up again and both both those platforms start innovating like they were back in the day. That's because they they both kind of gotten complacent. Um, it, it, it would be nice. But, yeah. If anybody knows why it, 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 those they cost so much for what they are, I, I'd love to hear it. Uh, do, do you think it's nobody wants to subsidize them? I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. Like, they're afraid they're not going to stick and they don't want to take the risk of subsidizing them at all. Yeah, you mean the Chromebooks, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think maybe it's just too early. It could be that, you know, after a couple of months, somebody will pick up and say, hey, these are selling well, or maybe not. And if they are selling it well enough, there may be some companies that do start to express interest. But at the same time, Chromium, Chrome OS, whatever, is a... Uh, not particularly prone to bundling anything with it, so who's going to subsidize it? Well, and, and, the, other, and the other thing is, I, I'm trying to understand why you why you need Chrome OS because the reality is, you can get everything you get from Chrome OS on a normal computer by installing Chrome or Chromium and using the marketplace, which is the uh, I think the biggest reason for it is the the seam seamless experience they're going for, and that you can. Uh, Oh no! Something went wrong with my with my laptop. You throw it in the trash. You pick up a new one and got the same experience because everything is in the cloud. But like you said, that's already available in Chrome. It's just how many end users know about Chrome and how many of them are actually using it. Well, but the default <laughs> well, it, Chrome's the fastest growing browser right now, even though it's not my cup of tea. Uh, and, and when you open up Chrome, you know the defaults the default screen on Chrome isn't a web page. It, 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 or Chromium, it's the wow. last Windows you went to and this little thing up here, go to the marketplace. You know, it's like, so unless they're just blind, they kind of got to know at this point. It, it advertises every time you launch the application for crying out loud. You know, it's like, uh, I guess I'm assuming people read. Maybe people don't read anymore. It's like, maybe it should, maybe it should start talking to them. You know, it's uh, okay. okay. Moving on to air. <laughs> messing around with Google Plus, I got an email from it. Oh, I have I haven't messed with it yet. That's like well, so somebody sent me an invite last night. I, I I have one. I haven't clicked it. Like, like uh, uh, what, what, good, bad, indifferent. Uh, so far, it's pretty mediocre. I mean, Google has tried the. We're making a social network thing several times before, and several yeah. times before it has failed. The, 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 the biggest the, problem that I see so far is it says, 
give us your Google contacts, your Android contacts, and um, that's about it. I think you can import a CSV file, but if the people aren't already in Google+, Plus, you can't talk to them. You can't, unless you have invites available, you can't invite them, so it's like an antisocial social network. <laughs> What's the point that of an antisocial social, social yeah. antisocial? It's the antisocial well, I mean, network. <laughs> the people that invited me, the people that I, I know from my, my local log and stuff, I talked to him today on it. It's like, yep, I could have talked to you guys on Facebook or Twitter or Google Talk or <laughs> any one of a hundred other platforms. You can't reach me on Facebook, and I like it that way, damn it. The problem with you for, uh, with, for Google is uh, Google Plus is going to be you are supposed to give your real name. Yeah, that's, that's one more. Re is, at least you can kind of private that in Facebook. Kind of. Uh, Sorry, uh, a, a message from P3 Droid, a guy who does a lot of. Uh, he does the, the releases and hacks for um, Android based devices. Uh -huh. He said something about getting denied for Google Plus because he wouldn't give them his real name. The, no, it, it's like, and it, Facebook's getting more and more that way too. Like, you, you have to get more and more creative with your aliases if you want them. And, it's like, and, and that's the thing. Like The only way to assure anonymity is not to give them it in the first place. If you give it to them, at some point, they're going to accidentally or intentionally give it to other people. Uh, it's just it's inevitable. It really is. No, no, no system's perfect. Um, and, and, yeah, I, I don't know. It's... It's interesting to watch Google mess with this, you know, social thing. You know, they're adding the plus one buttons to Google search. They're trying to do this social... <laughs> they're allowing everybody to put it on their website. I've had yeah. it on my site for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, and everyone else. And I'm like, it's very clear Google realizes that good, bad, or indifferent, Facebook is not going away. And they're like, we don't own any part of Facebook, we don't have anything to do with it, and this takes place entirely outside of Google. Well, and the funny thing is, if they <laughs> if they open up invites to everybody, and they tie it into Facebook and Twitter, and uh, uh, your YouTube subscriptions and stuff, they would probably very easily dominate the market once everybody started migrating in that direction. Because right now, the platform does seem uh, acceptable. I mean, yeah, it does help you with your privacy a little bit. It's still very early, though. It feels very, very early. Yeah, well, no, and, and that's the thing. Uh, it, 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 there, there are enough people who like don't trust Google who would be. They're helping you with your privacy now. As soon as you get you, they're gonna turn into the Zucker Pope and just go fuck your privacy. What privacy? It's like, and that, that's like the thing everybody's paranoid now. They've accepted it from the Zucker Pope, but anybody who tries to come along and compete with the Zucker Pope. They've instantly judged them for all the sins of the Zucker Pope. And, you know, let, let's be honest, it is Google. You know, Google makes some people a little, eh, what's a Google? <laughs> it's like, it's like, which I, I don't understand, because, you know, at the end of the day, if you really realize how much information Google has access to, I, I, I hate to say it, that ship sailed a long time ago. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> Uh, at the end of the day, all you're really doing is claiming ownership <laughs> of something they already know. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, it's, hopefully, I didn't make anybody too paranoid there. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay. Um, They're yeah. adding the uh, plus theme to to Gmail apparently, and you can preview it now. Yeah, yeah you know, I I have never liked the Gmail themes. I know people who swear by them and yada yada, but I honestly, I, I miss the old Gmail because every time, ever since they switched over this, and, and, and here's the thing I hate it, it, with 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 the Google services, it's either you use the latest and greatest, or you get nothing. Like if you're using the old version of Gmail, you can't use the chat, the site, you can't use anything. It, it's not there. It's just gone. And I'm like. The primary reason I use the old one is because the way they put the, co the code together is compatible with tab browsing. I can right-click on things and open them in a new tab when I want to, because there are times I want to do that. My browser has tabs. I want to use them. I don't want one window and one window only and one thing at a time. I want to multitask. I know. Crazy idea. And, and I would use the new one because I want all that stuff if they would just 
fix the code to be fully tabbed compatible so that everything I can click on in there, I can right click. And it's a minor tweak to the way the code is outputted into the browser. I don't understand why the Google Plectin engineers do not understand the concept of maybe somebody wants to right click. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I've ranted. <laughs> It, 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 Actually, I think we went off on a completely different tangent there. Yeah, we, we, we did. <laughs> Unintentionally. 